question that has come up a few different times and ways in the past couple of months, understandably so. He uh, asks, can you revisit uh, the implications of upgrading my Synology disk station to DSM version 7? A while back, you mentioned several preparation steps to make sure Plex and perhaps some other applications would keep working. I filed your comments away as let them fix it all before I upgrade it. Now, perhaps the dust has settled and I should think about doing this. I'm a fairly light user, but I do rely on my disk station for Plex, Dropbox, and OneDrop, OneDrive syncing, and significantly sized photo collections in moments, which I understand will be deprecated and converted to Synology photos. Bottom line, is it a seamless upgrade, or do I need to set an afternoon aside for fiddling around? So my short answer is yes, it is stable now, and you're good to go. But please don't go and do that until you finish hearing the rest of my answer. Uh, you want to make sure 100% of your packages are up to date. Most of them can be done using Synology's package manager and just letting it check for updates. Plex is not most of them. Plex, for whatever reason, the package that often resides in Synology's uh, repository is old. And we've heard of people. Pilot Pete just ran into this back in December, so not that long ago. Uh, going through, making sure everything's up to great, up to date in Package Center, and then still having a problem when upgrading. So go to Plex.tv, download the package for your Synology from there, or launch Plex and look inside Plex. It will tell you in the in the uh, if you go to the web interface, the admin interface for Plex itself, it will tell you if there's an update. Follow those links. You're going to download a package. You're going to manually install it. That's how the upgrades to Plex are done. Uh, so you go manually install that. Follow the instructions that appear on the screen. You will see a couple of warning messages come up. And you, even though you know better, you are going to be so tempted to just click through them. Do not do that. It's okay to click through them, but you're going to miss instructions because there's a couple of things that need to happen with Plex and permissions before you upgrade to DSM-7. You can do all this on DM DSM-6. DSM-7 adds some sandboxing uh, for all apps, and Plex was one of those that needed to revamp the way they did things in order to work with the new sandboxing. Your life is much simpler if you migrate to the new way of doing things with DSM-6 when Plex still has permissions across your disk station. Once you upgrade to DSM-7, it does not have the permissions to easily migrate you and you have to do things manually. So make sure you get Plex up to date and that it's that you've done all the things it tells you to do. Uh, the only other caveat I would have for Lefwin is that he is a heavy moments user and moments will be migrated to photos. Uh, you should be okay. I was, uh, and I did this on day one of DSM seven. I of course was burned by the whole Plex thing um, as Pete was recently. But you can you can avoid being burned by that. I was not burned at all by the moments to photos upgrade. Uh, I did have to change the apps on my devices, of course, on my client devices like my phone. But uh, but that migration was was smooth. So do you need an afternoon set aside for fiddling about? No, but I also wouldn't do this when you need to leave the house in 12 minutes. Right. I mean, it, it's going to the upgrade is going to take. Probably even once you get all your apps and you're like ready to pull the trigger, it's going to take you, I mean, probably a half hour before the disk station is like back up and running and ready for you to log in. And then you're going to want to log in and make sure all of your things work, uh, including photos. But, you know, everything else, your, you know, your Synology drive syncing, your uh, cloud sync, which it sounds like you're using cloud sync's a great service uh, for those of you that, that don't know of that. It will let you sync things like your Dropbox or OneDrive and others with your disk station. So having your disk station act as a client and then you can sync those there. Then you don't need to run the clients on all your client on all your Macs and iPhones and stuff because you can just get at it via Synology Drive. So it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, so hopefully that helps.